Ten songs will compete in the final of Dansk Melodi Grand Prix 2016, Denmark's selection for Eurovision 2016. We have just heard the songs, and it is time to pick our top three. Starting with Denise, number three. I love Denmark this year. I really love Denmark, so I just wanted to say that. Um, it was really hard to make it top three, but this time it was really hard because all the songs are good. I mean, there isn't a song that I absolutely hate, so well done, you did a great job this time. So what you asked me, my third favorite, it's Mori and Mario. I love their song and it's in Danish and I really like that there is a song in Danish in this final and I don't know it's it's so much fun and I really like that instrumental part that na 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 it's it's so memorable and the guys sing really good it's doing something with me and normally I don't really like songs in their language I'm like, I'm always loving the English songs, so that I like a Danish song, it's it's really rare. And yeah, I love it. My third is David J with Rays of Sunlight. Baby, you hit like rays of sunlight. I know it's a really cheesy song, I'm not going to deny that, but it's like if Jason Derulo or Neo or someone suddenly went, bam, I'm going to try and be as cheesy as possible. And it's a really up-tempo, summary track and see as well a lot of people forget it's freezing cold now in January but again May comes around everybody's gonna be ready for the summer and like people like Jesse Matador have capitalized on that in the past so I think David J could surprise us all he's last in the poll at the moment I think so. well deserved last place I might add if he is still in sunlight give me some SPF 90 <laughs> I don't want any of it it's just out of place um, but on that same theme my number three is also bringing some sunshine. She is creating an illusion that Denmark is a tropical paradise. It's Veronica's illusion with the wrong kind. This is very Ibiza. You can just picture yourself stumbling out of a nightclub with someone you don't know before going back to their house and doing things you'll never forget. I just love the up-tempo nature, the feel, the summer vibe. Um, it's very non-Denmark. Um, then again, it reminds me in some ways of Natasha Bezos, Bezos, whoever, the girl who came second to Basim because she had that fun, upbeat saxophone song. And this is kind of a fun, upbeat and beachy. Um, I want some sand in my toes. Thank you, Veronica. Going to my second favorite, it's Anja Nissen. You're never alone. It was the first song that I heard and from this selection and I really like it. And I was immediately like, oh my God, is, if this is what the Danish election um, it will be, then it will be great and yeah, it was right. It has the typical Danish nature, Emily the Forest sound and in a totally positive way. And when the chorus is over, I mean the chorus is really good, but at one time you think, okay, it's over now, but then it will be, it is like never alone. Okay, I think you have to cut this out. That's the best part of this song and I keep singing it along and I really like it. It's fun and I can see a whole choir that's singing along with, with that part. And we all know she's a great singer because, well, she proved it in Australia. So I think she will be one of the competitors that we will see in Stockholm. Yeah, I think she has a great chance to win. My number two is Veronica's Illusion. She's just like the wrong kind of song for Denmark, but so right, because it's the kind of song that Ukraine or Russia, before they went off peace, would um, <laughs> send. Like it's Annie Lorek, Maria Yaronchuk, it's that kind of trashy Euro pop. And we need some of that on the stage because I've been complaining about it all year. But like mm. since last year's national final, we've been overdosed with ballads. And it's like Kesha. And Kesha's been absent from her lives for a while. So let Veronica fill the gap. My number two is Shaped Like a Heart because it is Heart Shaped Hall by Simone. Like the sun in my soul, you 
Now, I think the title sounds a little nasty, but if I put that to the side, I really love Simone. She at times sounds like Sia. Like there's something edgy, electro, and then very mainstream about her all at once. She says, "Like a thorn in my side, you left a heart-shaped hole." I'm glad it was a thorn <laughs> that went in her heart-shaped hole. I just love this song. <laughs> There's something about it that falls on the ears. You could hear this on the radio, like right now,、um, and you could also hear it on the radio in May. It's got this kind of very current sound.、Um, and in the past, I think Denmark has sent some songs. I'm like, I don't want to hear that on the radio, but this I would definitely want to hear. I think it's going to be between her and probably Anya Nissen,、um, who Denise already mentioned, because they're both such good vocalists and they both have、mm-hmm. such good songs.、Um, <coughs> yes, it is time to reveal our number one, our top pick to win Dance Melody Grand Prix. Well, I'm going to continue with Simone. So good, and 2013 was the best、uh, dance melody Grand Prix for me ever, and I hated it that I had to choose between the three super finalists because I loved all of them, and yeah, of course, including Simone. So when I heard her name, I was like, oh my god, yes, she's coming back, and I was so happy.、Um, and as before, I heard the song.、Um, but when I heard the song, I was a little disappointed, and. Um, Patrick from Weebly Blogs, he said it correctly. He said it's kind of the Ira Losco effect that you expect it to be really, really good, but your expectations are a little too high. So it was like that. But then I heard the song for like a million times, and I was like, why didn't I give this a ten instantly? Because it's so good. And why was I ever disappointed with this song? I I can't believe it that I thought that two days ago because now it's ha,、huh, it's really really good. And like you said, the、um, Isa of the Sia part,、um, yeah, I I can also see that, and especially when she's going that high, like、um, like me. Okay, I'm sorry if we lose few words with all my singing, but that part that's so Sia, and yeah, I think it will between、um, Anya and Simone. I think Simone is just playing on the familiarity card、uh, because she was in the semi or the super final twice in 2010, 2013. I didn't see either of those years, so I'm not familiar with the woman at all. So I don't care for her. I don't care for her <laughs> song. She's not my number one. Anisa is. The song is just great. We know she can sing. She won the Voice of Australia. This is better than My Girls, the song that she snubbed, and yeah, and she's a really clever move if Denmark do send her because the Australians at home are obviously really familiar with her, so she was obviously popular enough there to win the Voice, even if she hasn't lit up the charts, people will remember her. So like, not only is she a good song, but I think she could be a real vote getter. Absolutely, twelve points from Australia and twelve points to me. Anya Nissen is my number one <laughs> to win Dance Melody Grand Prix 2016. You've already brought this up, Amelie the Forest Rainmaker vibe. This is like that, but a little less Lion King and a bit more Billboard Top 40. I think they've composed a song that works for people of many ages, that works for people across many different cultures. It's just, I don't mean this in a bad way. It's so middle of the road. It's good. It like it will appeal to everyone on both sides, and also it doesn't get boring. I think to win Eurovision, the songs that win typically can sustain your interest for three minutes, and not just during the chorus, but from beginning to end. And this song does that because it's not repetitive. Yes, it has familiar elements throughout and a distinct style and identity, but it feels different in different parts. I feel like I'm going on a journey through Africa with this Australian goddess whose parents are Danish. Love it. <laughs>、um, I just don't see how this. Well, yeah, I, I'm not going to say she's going to win, but I am actually. I don't think there's a way she's not going to win. I think this is by far the best song, and by far, well, not by far, but pretty far、yes. out there, a good performer, like one of the best performers. It's Simone Vianya for me. I agree. <laughs> Now, Porg, I know you're not into Simone, but who do you think it's between? Oh, it's probably between Simone, just on account of everybody's raving about her. But Anya Nissen, I think, is the winner. But like last year, everyone was harping on about Anne Gadegard, and her suitcase was packed for her and everything. And then on social media, went and won. Basim won ahead of the favourites the year before. But、um, I think 
Denmark, judging by the selection, they've kind of gotten their act together this year and have picked sensible songs for the national final. So I think they're in it to win it again. I kind of want Anya Neeson to wear your top for it because you have the African <laughs> elements on your shoulders. It's a sign. Um, Denise, yeah. are there any wild cards you think could kind of challenge these top two? Um, That's a no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not really. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and it's not because they're my third favorite, but maybe Moria Mario, because you always see that the song in the native language will be somewhere around the third or fourth place. So maybe they will be somewhere close to them, but they won't be first or second. I think they will be third and somewhere behind that. So, but no, 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 Simone and Anya. Well, that's what we think. What do you think? Let us know here on Wooby Blogs and be sure to press that like button while you're at it and then subscribe. See you later. Bye. Bye.